Du melang, du melang, du melang. Hello, everybody. My name is Intabise Nwechana, and I am a spiritual medium. So, last time we spoke about the significance of names. And today, I need for us to talk about the significance of surnames, right? Now, why do I want us to talk about this one? Um, it, it also follows a series of, of a master class that I did for Capricorn FM, and I thought it is an important lesson to, to, to sort of uh, give again. So, when we are talking about surnames, there is an over-obsession about surnames. People would go and say, Ntabi, I found out that my dad is a Mukize, but Umkize, Umkize was then raised, is, is not our original surname. We were raised by the CBS. So Umkize did not take the responsibility and the CBS adopted us. And my mom got Rime or my mom's mom or my grandfather as mom got remarried and we were raised by these people the cbs and then we are finding out now uh -uh, we are actually not in this family we should be in the other one now can we then change our surname and people will come through with a question like that can we then change our surname you know and and because i i deal with surnames i connect better uh with surnames um not that your name will not work. In fact, your name is the most accurate identity you can ever have in this world, right? It's like your VIN number. You are a Toyota a 1996 model. You are a woman. You are a Crescida. And, you you know, you get to be called by your VIN number. When you say in Tabi saying, I know who you are, saying who you are referring to. But if you get in here and saying, Mwejana, rise, then all the Mwejanas in my family are going to rise. But when you say in Tabi, then you start to specify. So your your name is like your first number in the military or in 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 in, in the police academy. So it is one of the best way to identify an individual. And then you have a surname. So this over obsession of surnames, I I just wanted for us to to really talk about it and to understand it and to understand the advantages and the disadvantages thereof. Right, because immediately when people, sorry, when people find out who they are, then there's a frenzy. Yeah, uh, under them kise I'm poor. Uh, I'm not getting married. I am uh, going back and forth. Uh, there's even a mental illness in them kisses. So if I really go towards the CBS, I will be blessed. I will be okay. My life is going to be a bird of roses. Likely not, right? Perhaps not, because now there's a lot of things you need to understand about a surname that you have, about a surname that you had, and you need to understand the spiritual identity of that surname. Who were they? What did they used to do? Did they used to kill people? Did they used to sacrifice people? Were they preachers? Were they farmers? What were they? Who were they? It's important for you to get that spiritual understanding before you can then say, ah, I see, yes, eh, I'm going with you with them kisses, not giving me eh, nine enjoyments. I'm not having a good life with them, you know, so I'm just going to go to the new one. So I wanted to demystify the thing about surnames and what do they really mean in spirituality. So, I am referring on to the laptop. Like I said, I, I gave I gave this teaching somewhere else. So um I, I had written a presentation. I'd written a presentation. Corporate in spirit order. Uh, so I'm going to be referring. Um <laughs> when I was in when I was in school, uh first year. We, we had a group and we were doing some presentation and we had our lecturer, um, Mempala. And so my group chose me to do the presentation. And after I delivered, you know, I just spoke. It was coming out of my head straight into my lips, into the eardrums of fellow listeners, my wonderful audience. And I, you know, I, I, I rolled, I rolled and it was wonderful. And then I, then we got 95 
it it was an amazing presentation we got 95 and we were like oh where's the five percent we want that five percent and ma'am pala said my girl uh -huh. so every sentence uh, she spoke she used to end it with uh -huh. it was her thing uh -huh. so she says my girl you 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 need to respect your audience when you speak to us and you don't have something to refer from have a paper uh -huh. so that you refer from it and then as the audience we feel respected uh -huh. so i'm respecting my audience today and so i'm i'm, I'm having something to refer from so if you if you see me going uh, my eyes are going this way don't think or you tabi is about to get attacked no it's not an sos don't 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 make an sos call now surnames in african culture and the significance of surnames that is the big mystery in african culture there were no surnames this thing of surnames it, it was a chinese thing because the chinese population even from long time ago kept on growing rapidly and so people realized that we have too many shins and too many hong and too many kim um kims are japanese you know yeah they, they take out the kim so we had all of those people whose names were now being duplicated and we can now keep track of who is who in the system. And so they then thought, give them a second name, which was a surname, right? So you would then have Kim um, Lee, you have, Bru you have Bruce Lee. Obviously, <laughs> Bruce is not a Chinese name, but it just came to mind. So then they gave them surnames. And um, as, as, as other populations grew, in this case, the British population grew, they also started to have surnames because the British were also not on, 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 on a surname tip. If you go through your Bible, you will also realize that people did not have surnames. In fact, people were identified by their names, your first name, your first name and your occupation your first name and your origins where you come from and that is why you would have john the baptist john the name the baptist that is the occupation jesus of nazareth jesus the name nazareth where he came from you know and 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 there was the order that was the system and that is why you now have charles of windsor you know you do you do not have the queen's surname that the queen does not have a surname they identify by elizabeth of windsor that's where they come from right and so now over time over time as the population grew and they wanted to know whose son was not going to war and whose son was remaining at home so that we can now come and claim your child to go into war and therefore you started to have things like um you are john anderson now under was your father you are john anderson the son of under and then you became you then became you de you then had an identity of john anderson you are john the son of under you are um, uh, campbell the son of robert then you are Campbell Robertson, you see. And that system was just to monitor whose son is not going to war. And so even today, you would find that the, the colored community still has that, still has a Pam Anderson, whoever Anderson, because it, 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 it is a thing that trickled down throughout, and that's where they found their surnames from, right? So that, that, that is what happened. And even the Bible, you know, you have Jesse, the son of, you have David, the son of Jesse. The Bible says Samuel went into, um, into, into the field and he was sent to, 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 to the house of Jesse. And there he found sons. And Jesse was then asked, how many sons do you have? He gave them all the sons and Samuel said there was one son. And the Bible said, there was David, the son of Jesse. Hmm, amazing. 
They're saying he was handsome, so that's why I'm also passionate about it. Was very was quite good looking. So then there is that about where surnames come from. Is surnames an African thing? Must we obsess over surnames? Let's see. Let's hear. Now, in African culture, what did we used to have? We had Izitakazelo. We had Direto. We had Horkiana Ng. So, wana lewum ki kiana tro, kiana kudu, kiana nuku. You know, you had the totems. And so, in our clan names or in our praise names, uh, is Tagazelo, you would find, eh, hey, kena ngwecha na muana tolo, oh, nchimudi, all of those things. All of those things, they were descriptive. I am mukoni, and in my culture, they have big eyelashes. You know, kena mukoni wanchitu holo. <laughs> you know explaining the physique explaining the physique so that is how we used to identify ourselves that is how we so um i had to pause and do something i'm back and i was still on the the istakazelo and how my uh you know how how others uh istakazelo your totems your your clan name, your praise name, spoke about who you are, spoke about the character of your family, spoke about where your family came from. It it, it used to just detail all of that in a little, uh, uh, <laughs> somebody was saying it's a family song these days, but it's when we are praising you and the core of you, you see. So, that is what used to happen. And out of those things, you would then pick up the character traits. You would pick up what do, what do even this family eat, what they don't eat. For example, families like um, the Dlaminis. The Dlaminis, they would tell you other Dlaminis don't even eat eggs. They don't eat fish. You would find that detail in their, 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 their song, their, 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 their praise song their clan uh, song red or identity born am i even pronouncing this thing correctly but then you will find it out there you see so it had every detail that you need to know that is why uh, during funerals and weddings and any other sort of gathering we would say because we want to understand who you are who you came from who is this person that we are sending off into the next family but we want to understand their core of them who is this person that we are laying to rest today you know and then you would have people say, saying is tagazelo you know um do you know how how zulus love their their, their tagazelos you know is tagazelos out they love them like oh Ukumalo, umtunga, umkize, ukavazela, you know, umapoloba, ugacheni, unklo. Ah, I just love them. You know, they, they say them with so much pride. And, you know, obviously I did not say them in the right order. But you know that the Nglovus are the gachenis. You know, you know all of those things. Uh, because we watch soapies, right? Yes. Yeah, so you can tell I watch soapies. All of those information, I can only get them from soapies. So these are wonderful things. Now, surnames were suddenly now coming through to our shores because we were colonized by the British and therefore certain things now need to happen. We needed to be global citizens, right? And so people then started to believe that the father's surname should be the most important why was it then considered the most important? Because King Henry sat there somewhere when he was smoking his cigar and he thought, hmm, let's amplify patriarchy. Yeah, we have children and our surnames as fathers are much more primary. While it was not like that, it was just, it came with the emergence of patriarchy. 
and the emergence of patriarchy was doing away with the matriarchal system and so it had to to gallop it had to happen in the fastest of pace and then the way that it the only way that they thought was during birth registration that the father the the child needed to have the father's surname and that is where the the hype came from right so even if we weren't even if they were not married you just knew that a uh, Mary had a child with Josepha and Josepha he is of the Anderson and suddenly then in, in Tavi their product is in Tavi Anderson you see automatically automatically without really observing the rise of marriage so because we are Africans and you can only do an identity transfer via lobola via marriage then we started to want to adopt that thing right and then we started to legitimize the same name of the father after the father has clawed the baby you know or after the father has then paid the damage though in other cultures you can pay the damage as much as you want but if you are not marrying the mother of the baby then you are not given the same name so now what we have you you have a young man um he's busy there waking he's fine he has a child with mukadi and you know his life is going well but things between him and mukadi are no longer going well but then you have this little tori show of theirs they have a little tori show and the guy says yeah but i can afford to do it i can afford to do it so i want my son to have my same name wait does not work in all cultures in my culture it will not work in zulu cultures they'll give it to you you see because you would have done it in the right way the right way i'm always going to put inverted commas when it comes to the right way so that is why now you have surnames that are spelled in many many different ways because now you then had to adopt and become a kumalo but you were a very illiterate kumalo so somebody would then just start abantana bam ethi nasiwo kumalo siwo mtungo oh okay and then we don't know how we spell this kumalo is it kumalo with a k h is it kumalo with just a k u and that's where you got things now being different not that we are not the same kumalo but we were just been given names we were given pronunciations and not spelling because people were illiterate then right and so that is how the thing of surnames became quite popular and uh, people started to really take it as seriously as they do in african culture the way to to legitimize a baby we recognized that it is the mother's ancestors and the father's ancestors that allowed for a child to be born therefore one cannot be much more elevated than the other and that is why even if the couple is not married we still need to go and tell ancestors some people will go to the ancestors graves some people would just have a um, a normal mukimbila ekhaya my brother calls it mukimbo says we we having a mukimbo so they would then have their own mukimbo here in the in the yard they would have their own mukimbo in the yard and tell ancestors that we have a newborn we have a child and to us a child has been given right and then ribi hangwana we dedicate the child to all ancestors so if i am not married and i have a child by a mukwena there right then they would take my little child and say eh, at our altar at our family altar where we partner they would then say we have our we have a, a newborn ancestors thank you his name is tori show eh, the body is ours but the head is mukwena's right so we acknowledge that this child uh, the father has not married uh, our daughter but the head is the mukwena's and we are then grooming the body that is why when somebody dies in african culture uh, they would say tlogo e wele the head has fallen because that's where your entire life is right so and the heart there are many things on the pancreas hey if if you are a medical doctor here listening to me 
don't start correcting her and you if your pancreas dies you you really are your head can can save you so don't do that don't do that spirituality we're talking spirit this is my forte work with me so then you you then have all of those things happening right that, that's why you 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 have all of those things happening so then why why do we have an understanding that the father's surname is much more primary and the mother's surname is secondary patriarchy and again trying to have systems that are going to make other people who are not married look somehow odd Marriage is not for all of us. Even the Bible will tell you there are 59 blessings and there are 58 um, curses that are there, right? And not all of us are going to get all of those blessings. Not all of us are going to get all of those blessings. So when when the Bible says, I'm just going to quote the Bible here, um, you know, because I'm not that conversant with the Quran. I I, I would if I could. But when, when, it, when it then says... Um, that there are certain blessings that other people will get, certain blessings other people can will not get. Does that then illegitimize other births? Other births, does, are they now illegitimate? Not really. Now, both surnames are right spiritually because they were allowed, they were used. Descendants of all of those surnames were used to birth and to conceive a child, to conceive and to birth a child. Um, now there are other people who will say, Ntabi, do I need to go use that same name? Maybe I will get a certain blessing. Maybe I will find employment. Maybe I will do whatever. And we say, you can't sift out surnames. So even when you send your libations, when you partner, you will still call all of your surnames. You'll still call the mother's surname. You'll still call the father's surname because you do not know you sitting there. You can have a clear idea of who your guides are, but you do not know which vibra which I mean where the strong vibration of ancestors comes from. Now there are other people because you heard that hey Habu Mama, they're a little bit dodge, they're a little bit fishy. So I'm not going to call their surname because now I'm going to be calling all bad ancestors. You can sift them out. You are a product of both. Well, in this case, you're a product of four uh, lines of surnames. D, 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 unless if your people were, the cousin was marrying the, uh, the aunt's child and, and, and you find that you, you share a surname. And in most African cultures, because now we were in small Anyana villages, you will find that most of you are related to other surnames there. You see? You realize that you are related to other surnames. So somebody would say, in terms of me uh, getting blessed, do I need to not call other surnames? You call them all, and then you say, out of the Mogwenas and the Mwejanas, I call all of those that come with light, and all of those that have the best of intentions for me as their child, uh, Mukadi. Mama, that's what you do. And even when you pass, like, you introduce yourself, even though your parents are not married, mm -hmm. you would then say, Hello, grandmothers and grandpas. My name is Ntavi Singh. Here is Ntavi Singh. Wanawa Donald. Wanawa Daina. Donald wa shaku. Daina wa hangwe chana. You know? Why? Because you were then dedicated to your own ancestors. So it's important that either way you get to be dedicated to the ancestors. Right? Now, sometimes people would come to me or would go to a hila quite later and they would have already changed their surnames. Dun, 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 dun. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it does not. And the most important thing for you to understand, it is the spiritual identity of your people's surnames. So there are other people, they would have changed their surname. And then the next thing, their lives are not as best as they thought. In the worst case scenario that I once dealt with, um, I was doing a crossover of a particular spirit and their cousins were, were, were here. And this young man had a nice job or after school and they, you know, they were really at the prime of, of their life. And 
they discovered oh daddy wants me and then changed the surname uh two months later this this young man dies you know why because the new surname that he adopted they actually sacrificed their own so they could actually call him by the surname properly now they did the entire ceremony they did the spiritual transaction transaction and they got him and he died because the family was due for a sacrifice what do you do then it's important to know your family's identity their spiritual identity now in african practice you don't just change your surname unless the economics of pregnancy have been observed the economics of pregnancy right the damage it's, it's a very it's a very odd word damage but it, it is what it is um some some certain rights need to be observed in order for you to gain a spiritual privilege and to make certain spiritual transitions the economics of pregnancy should have been addressed or in case the bride price should be paid if you marry me and i marry you my love you know it used to be a song if you marry me i marry you my love <laughs> for a music guys you know it's so easy to have a song Mar lena uh you you are not you, you are going to eat late you are going to eat late and that is why you would then find that other people much later in life when they are much older then the economics of pregnancy get to be observed and then you have your later the movies came the guests were holding the ball and you would have go eh, jerry mufuking somebody i don't know what in that jerry eh, has has changed his name to but then you would have those kind of people who are one now one of the biggest myths is that the father's surname provides spiritual protection and that is the biggest myth because sometimes i am in wajana and the Mojanas were healers. And I marry a certain Chidi. And Chidis were just ordinary people uh, who didn't have any spiritual inclination, who didn't have anything. They were just ordinary people. I'm not saying people who, who, who are not gifted are not ordinary. Please, 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 please hear me correctly. I am saying that perhaps the magic of the family was in very low vibration and you have this gallant people who were they this and that and they were the royals and they were the whatever and then you decide to go and take a chidi while the wajanas were much more uh you know that they were able to make things happen in, in the spiritual arena they, they, they are the better people to have when you are looking for protection they were the warriors they were the healers they were the rainmakers. they were they had boom 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 things good things happening about them and then you decide ah my mother was not married and now um then you start to belittle certain things from your mother's family please don't do such do not do such don't sift out ancestors all of them are important just know just know which ones to appeal for for what purpose and you see a birth of an individual is a serious thing right I birth a child, there are 50% my DNA and 50% the other guy's DNA. If this person, if the father of the baby does not do right, is absent, they are not, um, you know, they are just out there doing their own thing. The 50% of this person's DNA and what they contributed in this person will always ring on to this person and say, you are, you are missing. You are missing. You are missing something. And that's why you would then find a, uh, an occurrence of people saying, eh, the father of my child has come through. They are telling me that ancestors are not giving him peace. Apart from ancestors, there is proven medical facts that this person will go through some sort of a psychological, you know, um, I can't say, but let's say a psychological twist because a part of him 
it's located elsewhere and it will keep on saying i i want you i want you i want you so even apart from ancestors saying we shall claim you and you must go back and go support your child and go pay pay uh, in Kaulu and all of these things just normal biology will deal with the guy or will deal with the woman if you leave your if you leave there are other women that leave children with men and she just goes out there something is not going to go right by them apart from just ancestors saying something else will happen to them i hope you have an understanding of what surnames were used for and how surnames come, came into us and how we got to use them and what is the actual spiritual significance of surnames versus your clan names your praise names and all of those things these are the things that identified you all other things we are part of a global world and so we got to adopt them as and when they go so they should not really define us that much it's not that they're not important they are important and somebody would say Tabi, why are you having this talk because you want to say names yes i do want to say name i want your name and say name because immediately when i do i'm given a file like from the from the department of home affairs i'm given a spiritual file and that is why some people would then say you know the typical people that i was tell i was talking about that you 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 go into a certain uh place and the the farmer there the the liguru there cannot cannot pronounce your surname and somebody would give me one of those surnames and i would say i'm not finding a file there's nothing in the spirit about that surname is this the original surname you see but my point is before we can have these things before we can obsess about these things before before we can want to go and change we just need to understand the same applies when you are going to get married into a different family you need to understand who are these people that i'm getting into uh, some people really sacrifice their own some people are really good people spiritual identity is more important than just a name people are still being called elizabeth of windsor and they have no issues because their children were not going to war i hope this opens up your mind and i hope that we can continue to to teach each other tell me your views tell me your views about about some of these topics ne? let's let's have a proper let's have a proper discussion be blessed may the good lord bless you abundantly in everything you do may you prosper Thank you so much. I'm Tabi Sengwe and I'm a spiritual medium.